Okay, hi, welcome to day three of the 21 Days to Revelation Challenge. Thank you for joining again. Today we are going to do a self-inventory, okay? And we're going to do a little activity. I got this idea from a book called Life Word, Discover Your One Word to Leave a Legacy. It's by John Gordon, Dan Britton, and Jimmy Page. So if you want to upload that book or buy it, that's totally fine. I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version right now just so that we can do this activity together. Okay? And the goal is to come up with one word that's going to represent your um, vision and, and mission for 2018 or the next five years or forever or the next 10 years or, or however you want to do it. But if you just look ahead one year, that might be a good place to start, okay? So let me hold up this chart. The book asks you to look into three areas of your life, okay? And I'm going to incorporate God's Word into this as we go. Okay, so here we go. Uh, right here is where you're going to determine your life word. And mine's blank, and I'll, I'll tell you what it is later. But for now, we're going to go through each of these areas. All right, so the first one is power. And power, your power, represents your gifts and your strengths. So gifts are what you are naturally born with, right? And strengths are something that you develop over time. So, um... If you've ever done a spiritual inventory, that might reveal your spiritual gifts, how God made you, and you can incorporate that into what we're doing here. Um, so, for example, I was I naturally have the skill set to be a counselor. That's something that I don't really have to work at uh, too hard, right? Um, what I so that's my gifting, right? What I've developed over time, which is my strength, is my horsemanship. I wasn't just born ready to train horses, right? Okay, so that's an example. Another thing you can do here is ask yourself, what would your superpower be if you were a superhero? And if you don't know what your strengths and gifts are, you can ask someone. Ask people that you trust that are close to you. That's a really good place to start, okay? So, if you want to take a minute, press pause, and think about your power, your gifting, your strengths. Um, send a text message to somebody to ask them what they think. Um, and then ask yourself what your superpower would be if you were a superhero. That will help you start to get your ideas for where your um, power is. And, of course, it's God's power in us, right? But this is, this is what they call it. Okay. So if you just want to take a minute and do that, that would be great. Okay, now, the other circle that we're going to talk about now is purpose. Purpose represents your calling and cause. Your calling is, the book describes, is what you were made for. When you say, oh, I was made to do this, that might be your calling. Uh, your cause might be what breaks your heart, okay? What are you moved to do in life? If you see something that's not working in this world and you're really moved to do something about it, that is your cause. So in this, in this circle, you're going to have your sense of calling and, invest in your, and where you want to invest in a cause. So some questions you might ask yourself are, what does the world need to help you come up with your cause? What am I made to do to fill this need to help come up with your cause? And then I've added, separate from the book, what breaks my heart for the Lord and what will bring glory to the Lord? Also, what can I do with, with all these things that has an eternal purpose? That's a really important piece, right? Okay. So, again, if you want to press pause and think about your purpose, you can do that now. All right. Now we're going to talk about this circle, which is your passion. So in passion, it is just, your passion is filled with optimism and belief. Okay? This is what motivates you uh, and gives you energy. There's something, there was a quote in the book that I want to read. Because, first of all, there's a lot of things that we might be passionate about. Um, 
but they could also be selfish endeavors, right? So there was there was a sentence in the book. It says, "Passion for your selfish pursuits is rarely sustainable because it leaves you empty, but passion for others and the difference you can make in their lives is both sustainable." and satisfying and then I added and has eternal purpose right and we all know this to be true when we when we use our gifts our strengths our talents our passions for the greater good we get way more out of it than if we are just pursuing selfish endeavors because they're really empty and then you always have to go kind of to the next level and nothing's ever really satisfying and you know all that okay so that's it in a nutshell. If you want to press pause again and think about your passions, then do that and join me for the next thing, okay? Okay, so the next piece of this puzzle is as you go through your purpose, your passion, and your power, Hopefully, you're kind of writing out like one word. If you're not, condense some of your phrases to one word. Okay, and I'll give you some. This is mine. This is um, how I did mine. I'll hold it up here, and I might have to get out of the camera so you can see. But as far as what my purpose, what I felt my purpose was, uh, I put shepherding, inspiring, teaching, speaking, writing, discipleship. For power, approachable, vision, joyful, speaking, wooing, horsemanship, creating. Under passion, um, I have a passion for the forgotten, the wounded, the hurting, the abused, anyone who's been neglected. I have a passion for my family and friends, people I care about, and animals, okay? So I tried to limit it to one word, and, and you're going to need that because remember, you're coming up with one word, right? So the next thing that you do after you figure out your purpose, your passion, your power and you let God reveal those to you. You want to again ask people that are close to you that you trust to share with you things like if you could describe me in one word what would you say? What would you say my greatest attribute is? Have them send you some one, one words and let that speak to you as well. So I did that with my mom and my two aunts and then also I had, um, I had a, a, like a whiteboard with a bunch of one-liners on it from 10 women that I, I only knew for a week when I um, went on a retreat and they spoke words over me. And I used that sheet and compared it to what I had written and what my aunt and my mom said and that helped me come up with my one word. Um, and so this is a bit of a process. So take the time it takes. If it takes you a couple days to do it, do that. That's fine. Um, I tend to, to, I found it better to sit down and give myself 30 minutes to an hour to work through this so that I could just be focused during that time um, and not have to move away from it. And again, it's kind of the first thing that pops into your brain too. This is not something that you really want to belabor either. You don't want to think too much about it, okay? All right, because we got to go back to God's promises, right? We got to think about God. <laughs> but let him speak to you about these things. And um, what I found when I came up with my one word was it was actually not a word on this list. It's not anywhere on this list. But it was a word that was all-encompassing of these things. And the way I found it and kind of the way the book tells you to do it is just start jotting down your one, what you think your one word might be. And it will jump out to you. You will like it. And so I was writing down words and I was like, no, that's not it. No, nah, I don't really like that one. <laughs> and finally I wrote down the word light. And... I loved it and I thought that's it because I am such a visionary that made a lot of sense to me and then it um, was confirmed through what my the people closest to me said and and also um, just some 
devotionals that I was reading the next day. It kind of confirmed that. So my word, I don't have it written here, but it is light. And um, I'm really just sharing with you what my experience was so that you can have an example. But again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, I'm kind of outlining the way the book says to do it. But um, let God speak to you individually about your one word. This is just a process of how to get there, okay? So this is a fun, exciting little activity to do to also propel us into... 2018 and what God wants to reveal to us and what he wants to do through us. All right. So I'm looking forward to finding out what your one word is. So again, on our closed Facebook group, if you will, once you find out what your one word is, if you'll share it, this will be a great way for us to encourage each other, get to know each other better and uh, pray for each other. All right. Um, have fun. Enjoy this process and let the Lord be in it all the way. Okay, see you soon.